Hey guys, I'm Eric. And I'm Grace. We're the Wandering Ravens. We're a couple of Americans on a quest to learn everything we can about the UK. This YouTube channel documents our British journey, so if UK culture videos are what cream your crumpet, make sure you subscribe. Today we're going to be introducing you to a list of animals that exist in the UK, but not in America. And if you're a subscriber, stay tuned because there is a special announcement at the end of today's video. The Western Capercaillie. Capercaillies, or capers, are delightful birds that can be found in Scottish pine forests. They're famous for their strange mating calls, courtship dances, brilliant plumage, and passionate love of iron brew. <laughs> While the capercaillie used to be common across the island of Britain, they went extinct in 1785 due to hunting. But fortunately for bird lovers and iron brew producers, capercaillies were reintroduced to Scotland in 1837. Currently, there are about 2,000 capers across Scotland, but they have not been able to re-establish themselves in England or Wales due to habitat loss. They just like the iron brew though, let's be honest. Yeah, they're there for the iron brew. Also, if my voice seems a little off today, it's because I badly burned my tongue yesterday. So speaking is causing me pain. Roe deer. Similar to British Homo sapiens, the European roe deer is a rugged species that thrives in cold, wet, and miserable environments. The British Deer Society website describes roe deer as attractive, medium-sized deer, which I think tells us more about the editors of the British Deer Society's website than it does about the deer themselves. Fun fact, did you know that roe deer actually change color throughout the year? Really? Yeah, during summer, their coats are a bright rusty red, mm. but that coat changes during the winter time when it becomes more of a slate gray. Attractive. <laughs> <laughs> and medium sized. When it comes to truly native British animals, the roe deer are a strong contender as they have been present in Britain for over 12,000 years. Due to hunting and habitat loss, there was a catastrophic decline in the population of roe deer prior to the 20th century. From what we understand, this is why roe deer are no longer found in Northern Ireland. In Britain, however, the roe deer have made a successful comeback due to woodland planting and reintroduction during the Victorian era. Blue tits. As we apparently like to beat dead horses on this show, blue tits are common in the UK because the weather is absolute shit. For those <laughs> Stop. Sorry. For those of you with blue tits, I'd encourage you to pull on a jumper and make yourself a cup of microwave tea. As for the bird, the Eurasian blue tit is a delightful little ball of energy and color. And making them even more endearing, blue tits are homebodies, seldom moving away from the place where they hatch. Unlike Homo sapiens, the male blue tit is considerably brighter than the female. Oh, this is talking about color. According to surveys, 98% of Brits report seeing blue tits in their garden over the winter. So we'll pass this question off to you. When was the last time you saw tit, I mean blue tits, in your garden? European Robins. The European Robin is the national bird of the United Kingdom. And just like Londoners on the tube, the Robin is famous for becoming aggressive and territorial when approached. If you have them, please share your aggressive Robin stories with us in the comments, as well as your aggressive Londoner stories, because those are always fun. While we have yet to be attacked by a robin, we have been accosted by Londoners on two separate occasions. They were not the friendly kind. <laughs> no. Are there a friendly kind of Londoner? <laughs> <laughs> fun fact, did you know that America has its own robin? It looks like this, and as you may have noticed, it looks pretty different from the European robin. As with all other things, the American version is bigger. Maybe not necessarily better, but bigger. <laughs> so different, why is the American one called a robin at all? Because as we've talked about in other videos, when English settlers left Britain and came to the New World, they made the mistake of not bringing with them any scientists or ornithologists. These wild colonists were already familiar with the European robin, so when they saw this bird with a red breast, they went, aha, robin. And then these same colonists turned around and named the eggplant. Fair Isle Wrens. Speaking of birds, Fair Isle Wrens are a small subspecies of bird, endemic to the island of Fair Isle in Scotland. Due to their remote location and prolonged isolation, Fair Isle Wrens have evolved into a specific subspecies of bird, making them separate from wrens on neighboring Shetland as well as the British mainland. 
And speaking of British animals that are endemic to remote islands, I'm pleased to introduce you to the St. Kilda field mouse. These adorable little mice live on the island of St. Kilda, which is an island about 100 miles from mainland Scotland. How did they get there? Well, the origin story is actually a bit of an exciting one for such a small creature. It's believed that they arrived on the island more than a thousand years ago on Viking ships. The St. Kilda field mouse has piercing black eyes, adorable small ears, and is generally twice as large as the field mice that you can find on the mainland. While they originally would have been the same size as their mainland cousins back when Viking ships brought them to the island, it's believed that the lack of predators on St. Kilda inspired the field mouse to evolve into a larger creature. Wombles. These musical and furry creatures live in burrows around Wimbledon and are famous for their tenacious recycling. Even though they are wild, wombles seem to be aware of the need to protect the environment, and so they try to collect and recycle rubbish in creative ways. Fearing the great womble hunt, wombles do their best to keep their existence a secret from humans, and ask those who do know about them not to spread the word. Oh shit. Nightingales. Slightly larger than the European robin, nightingales are die-hard romantics. And that's not a joke, as it's believed that the nightingales that sing through the night are single male nightingales trying to convince single female nightingales to fly down and share a worm with them. And after dinner, possibly more. Fun fact, while literature and poetry often refer to the female nightingale as being the one that sings, it's actually the male nightingale that does the serenading. Boy, do nightingales like to sing, in comparison to many other bird species which can make between 100 and 300 unique sounds, nightingales are able to belt out an astonishing 1,000 unique sounds. Wallabies. According to Wikipedia, documented colonies of red-necked wallabies exist in the United Kingdom, which is a surprise to me because I thought rednecks only existed in Florida. British wallabies established themselves in the wild after breaking loose from a private zoo in Staffordshire. Which is an exciting way to say that some plonker left the gate open. Despite regular sightings during the 1970s, Britain's wallaby population seems to have declined, with no reported sightings between 2000 and 2007, and only a few sightings reported since then. If you're one of the Brits who has seen a wallaby in the wild, do share that story with us. Wild Haggis. The wild haggis is a cunning creature, with the legs on one side of its body being shorter than the legs on the other. This allows it to run quickly around steep Scottish hillsides and mountains, though only in one direction. Fun fact, not only did Haggis's unique running style inspire the name of a popular British boy band, You're insecure. there are also two varieties of Haggis, one with longer left legs and the other with longer right legs. This means that one haggis variety is able to run around the mountain clockwise, while the other haggis must run around the mountain counterclockwise. The two species coexist peacefully, but unfortunately for haggis tinder, cannot interbreed. This is because in order for the male from one species to mate with the female from the other species, he must turn and face the same direction as the female. But due to having legs of different lengths, he will then lose his balance and topple over before being able to discuss Ugandan affairs with the female. And in what will be a surprise to no one, a 2003 survey of tourists found that one third of American visitors to Scotland believe wild haggis to be a real creature. If you're a fan of British animals, make sure you watch part one of this video right here. And if you enjoy watching Americans stumble over British humor and culture, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the like button to let YouTube know this video is worth watching. Ah, please. Also, a quick announcement for subscribers. Unfortunately, we will not be releasing a video this Sunday because we're actually gonna be on the road. Yeah, believe it or not, our confinement in Paris is coming to an end and so we are going to be leaving this country for another. Can you guess which one? Hint, unfortunately, it is not the UK. We appreciate each and every one of you and we will see you in next Tuesday's video. Au revoir.